is uh, Dr. Ruan Virasinghe, and he is the Senior Deputy Director, he's a Principal Research Engineer at the Industrial Technology Institute. Now, it's a, a laboratory, or it has a function of, uh, of, sort of measuring and it gives consultancies to projects. So for example, his area of expertise is electronics and automation. And he has worked both in the private and public sectors. And he is really in, does a lot of work on uh, scales, for example, consultancy projects to analyze and provide solutions to noise pollution from wind farm industries. And also he has looked at noise pollution, for example, in major roads and so on. So really, it's, he's also interested in organic agriculture certification and process automation. So there's quite a lot of interest that he has. So he is going to talk about the environmental impact evaluation of wind power plants and other sustainable energy power plants, a very important aspect of when we move from one technology to another and how the impact on the environment. So thank you, uh, Dr. Vera Singh, and please go ahead. You've got about 12 minutes from now. Yeah, uh, thank you, Penupa. Uh, uh, yeah. We can see your screen. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, so my topic is uh, environmental impact evaluation uh, uh, for energy sources. Uh, and uh, when you take uh, a sustainable energy source, uh, we consider it as a, a clean energy source uh, which generate uh, energy uh, without any envi environmental impact. But uh, when you take a certain energy source uh, during the energy generation cycle, uh, we have positive as well as negative environmental impact. So in Sri Lanka, uh, you have uh, wind and hydro and solar uh, energy source uh, mainly used uh, for energy generation uh, when you uh, consider as uh, renewable energy, energy sources. And when you take a wind power, uh, it generates about uh, 230 megawatts. And when you take hydro, it generates about 1,300 megawatts. And from solar, about 44 megawatts, uh, actually these uh, uh, figures may uh, increase uh, in uh, near future, uh, as mentioned by uh, the previous speaker. Um, yeah. Uh, so when you take uh, uh, the wind farm distribution, uh, actually uh, most uh, wind farms are located in northern region uh, and uh, uh, northwest and central and Sabragamo. And majority of wind farms are located uh, in northwest and northern region, which are operated by the private sector operators. So uh, you can see uh, this figure. Uh, we are uh, one uh, wind tower. Uh, so there you can see uh, there are some houses located near uh, the wind tower. And uh, there are a lot of greenery as well. Uh, so when you are installing this uh, wind tower, uh, about 100 meter by 100 meter land space is reserved uh, uh, to implement uh, the wind tower. And after installation, this land can be used uh, for agriculture purposes. Uh, Uh, so one major problem with these wind farms is uh, the low frequency noise generation. Uh, so it generates uh, 0 to 20 hertz infrasound and 20 to 200 hertz of uh, low frequency uh, noise. So usually uh, when the wind uh, interacts with the uh, turbine blades, uh, the shear forces generate these low frequency noises which uh, travels far distances uh, and uh, it gives uh, certain problems uh, to the people who are living nearby uh, nearby uh, to the wind farm. Uh, so it gives uh, sleeping disturbances and public inconvenience and certain 
uh, other health effects uh, like headache, vomiting, and such, uh, etc. So apart from these low frequencies, uh, it generates uh, this uh, machinery noise uh, that is uh, from the uh, gearbox and from the uh, generator, uh, which can be overcome uh, through proper preventive maintenance uh, aspects. And Yeah. Uh, so here you can see uh, the noise distribution from a wind farm from a modeling study. Uh, so here uh, near the wind turbine, you have a noise value of about uh, 55 decibel. And when you uh, going away from the wind tower, uh, wind turbine, uh, the noise levels are reducing. Uh, uh, so uh, during the operational stage, uh, there will be about 50 to 56 decibel uh, from the wind turbine and uh, the wind farm operator has to manage this, uh, this uh, noise levels uh, in the, in, in the uh, regulatory values. Uh, so mostly uh, these wind farms are operated under the uh, industrial noise regulations. So usually, uh, it will be managed uh, during the daytime uh, around 70 decibel and during the night time it will be around uh, 60 decibel. So in the other figure you can see uh, the low frequency noise uh, distribution. There you can see uh, the low frequencies has a high uh, decibel value. Uh, another major problem with these wind farms are uh, the, the migration birds uh, can uh, collide with uh, the turbine blades. Uh, so when, uh, when uh, this MANA new uh, wind farm is uh, uh, installing, uh, they have taken necessary preventive action by implementing uh, sensing uh, mechanism uh, to detect these migrating birds and stop the wind, uh, wind, uh, wind, wind tower. Uh, in order to protect them. Uh, but when you consider the Ratnapura and Ambevela areas, uh, there are no such reported uh, incidents. So another problem with these wind farms are uh, when you are uh, during the construction period, uh, most of these wind farms are located, located in remote areas. Uh, so then you have to prepare proper access rules to the components of the wind tower. Uh, especially uh, this, uh, when you take a one wind turbine blade, it is about 30 meters in length. Uh, so you have to carry these uh, instruments uh, to the, uh, the site and therefore you have to prepare a proper road access network. Uh, and at the same time, you have to carry this heavy machinery as well. So in that case, there will be some sort of environmental pollution problem. And uh, one thing that we have uh, to pay more attention, uh, when you are taking uh, the, the lifetime of a wind turbine, it is spanning around 30 or uh, 20 years. And uh, with proper maintenance cycle, you can increase it uh, to around 30 years, uh, but uh, if the wind power plant is uh, not generating power in economical manner, uh, you have to decommission it. Uh, so when you are decommissioning the plant, uh, the wind turbine blades, uh, what you are going to do with them? So mostly uh, you are using these uh, wind turbine blades for land feeds, and uh, the other uh, parts of the turbine can be reused or you can recycle them uh, for scrap iron. So in Sri Lanka, actually, there was one incident uh, in Hambantota. There were about five wind plants, uh, which was uh, decommissioned by the Ceylon Electricity Board uh, through a tendering process. So when you take uh, hydropower generation, uh, you have uh, mo most of the hydropower plants are located in central region. Uh, confined to two uh, main river basins, the Kalani River Basin and the Mahavali River Basin. Uh, 
and apart from that uh, you have small and mini and micro uh, scale hydropower generation uh, uh, stations so when you take a hydropower uh, generation system uh, a dam is constructed uh, across a river uh, which uh, block the entire river and uh, uh, due to that uh, uh, the the upstream area get flooded and the downstream a area get dried so as a result uh, the aquatic life get affected and in the upstream area there will be uh, flooding and the agriculture land will get uh, uh, get flooded and you have to relocate the families and uh, there will be so many environmental problems and this may lead to climate change as well uh, so the another problem during the construction pe uh, period is uh, uh, to divert the water you have to prepare underground tunneling uh, so this underground tunnel may disturb the uh, ground water table about the tunnel so this is a major issue uh, so during the operational stage uh, of a uh, hydropower system uh, there is no much environmental impact but uh, in the power plant it will generate about 95 to 100 decibel but it won't be a much problem because these hydropower plants are located either underground or in remote areas where uh, people are not uh, living uh, but the major problem is due to uh, the natural uh, we are changing the natural environment uh, there will be long term uh, environmental problems and the other thing is the decommissioning of a hydropower station but here in sri lanka actually we don't have such experience but um, if the hydropower plant is not generating power in economical manner you have to decommission it but when you are going to decommission it uh, there will be lot of greenhouse gases emission um, due to accumulated uh, sediment uh, over the years uh, in the uh, dam so you have to use uh, this uh, Uh, proper decommissioning mechanism in order to reduce the environmental impact so when you take sorry, uh, no. sorry you have one minute sir. just yeah. over a minute left yeah yeah uh, mini and micro hydros uh, actually uh, it is very economical and uh, environmental friendly and uh, the other thing is the solar uh, when you take uh, the solar power generation you have uh, a uh, couple of uh, environmental problems associate with that uh, for example when you take a solar power system uh, it uh, you have to uh, use a lot of land uh, which can be used for agriculture as well uh, but uh, once you uh, once you increase uh, one, once you uh, decommission the solar uh, system uh, that is uh, after generating power to a certain period because the solar uh, power panels has a lifetime of about uh, 25 to 30 years uh, so after decommission you can uh, utilize this land uh, for uh, agriculture purposes but another environmental environmental problem with this uh, solar pv systems is uh, the uh, during uh, the power generation period Uh, the storm water accumulation because this is a large area which is exposing uh, to high rain during this rainy period uh, this uh, there can be soil erosion so you have to uh, divert the uh, storm water properly in order to uh, protect the uh, soil and uh, another problem is uh, the uh, pv uh, panel fabrication process uh, there are a couple of uh, environmental pollution uh, takes place uh, so uh, at the last slide uh, so how we are going to minimize this environmental damages from this renewable sources so whatever the uh, renewable energy uh, generation project that we are going to conduct you have to do a proper environmental impact assessment uh and then uh, based on that impact assessment uh, you have this environmental uh, uh mitigation uh, action plan uh, so uh, with the 
with the involvement of the project implementation or authority and the contract uh, you have to uh, you have to follow a proper environmental management action plan and uh, try to minimize uh, the environmental pollution uh, during the uh, installation of these uh, renewable energy projects so if you don't uh, do this uh, project in such a manner uh, there will be more environmental pollution due to these renewable energy uh, projects uh, and uh, it will affect uh, for long term uh, operation uh, of the uh, of the project yeah, thank you thank you very much uh, uh, dr veera singer that is very very interesting just to hear the sort of things that you've been doing and there have been lots of questions asked about uh, you know the in terms of uh, the wind farms and uh, what the impact would be particularly in terms of wildlife and also agriculture yeah thank you